When replacing the hydraulic cylinder on a through frame slide, you must first fully extend the slide out. This is important as it will provide you with appropriate room to work. With the room extended, measure the distance from the end of the piston rod to the end of the nylon locking nut. You should also take this time to measure the distance between the end of the piston rod and the two outstop adjustment nuts. Once you have recorded the position of the nuts, remove the nylon lock nut with a 1 and 1 8 inch wrench. With the nylon lock nut removed, retract the cylinder completely. This should pull it free from the outer bracket and shorten the cylinder to a length that will allow you to remove it more easily. With the cylinder fully retracted, remove the extend hose with a 9 16 inch wrench. Be careful when opening the line as fluid may leak out. If the fluid is under pressure, bleed the line before attempting to open it further to prevent injury. With the hose removed, use a 9 16 inch to remove the extend fitting from the cylinder as well. Attach the extend fitting from the old cylinder to the extend port of the new cylinder. If there is a plastic plug covering the port on the new cylinder, be sure to remove it prior to installing the fitting. Once the fitting is installed on the new cylinder, proceed with attaching the extend hose to the fitting. With the fitting and hose secured to the extend side of the new cylinder, extend the cylinder to its full length. This will help to remove as much air from the cylinder as possible and reduce how much purging the system will require. It will also help to reduce the pressure built up on the retract side of the system. The next step is to remove our retract fitting and hose from the old cylinder. Just like with the extend side, remove the hose first. Again, be cautious of fluid pressure whenever you are opening a hydraulic line. Once the hose is removed, remove the retract fitting as well. Attach the retract fitting to the new cylinder and tighten it down. Then, connect your retract hose to the fitting on the new cylinder. Now that our fittings and hoses have been switched over, retract the new cylinder to make it easier to install. With the new cylinder ready for installation, we need to remove our old cylinder. The last piece holding it in position is the 1 and 1 8 inch nut at the rear of the cylinder. Using your wrench, remove the rear nut and then slide the cylinder forward and out of the rear bracket. Tilt the back of it down and slide it back from the I-beam to finish removing it. Before installing the new cylinder, remove the nut from the rear of the old cylinder and thread it into place on the rear of the new one. Now you can install the new cylinder. Slide the cylinder rod through the trim plate on the I-beam until you can pivot the rear of the cylinder into place on the rear bracket. Then, slide the cylinder back into the bracket. Secure the cylinder in place on the rear bracket with the 1 and 1 8 inch nut and tighten firmly with your wrench. Next, remove the two 1 and 1 8 inch nuts from the cylinder rod on the old cylinder and thread them onto the cylinder rod of the new cylinder. Recall your measurements from the previous cylinder and adjust these nuts to the same placement. Once the nuts are in place, tighten the two nuts together to lock in the position. This will set our outstop for the slide out. To get our new cylinder into position with the outer bracket, you'll need to extend the cylinder and guide it into the bracket. Be cautious when doing this as the cylinder has a lot of force behind it and could pinch and injure your hand if not done correctly. 
Never place an object in the path of a moving component or pinch point as this could lead to serious injury or death. With the cylinder rod through the outer bracket, install your nylon lock nut to the measured point on the previous slide out. This will set your end stop for your slide out. Before the task can be considered complete, test the room by fully retracting and extending the room to ensure that your stops are set correctly. Ensure that the appropriate 2 to 3 inches of travel is left between the inner and outer stop settings on the cylinder rod when you are finished. Cycling the room fully in and out a couple of times should also help purge the system of any residual air. If any air remains in the system, follow the purge procedure documents to correct the issue.